Now, microphones are the most fundamental part of any audio system. No matter how good your loudspeakers are or how sophisticated the rest of your system is, if your audio source is a microphone, then using the wrong one or using one in the wrong way can be the start of your audio problems. There's a bewildering choice of microphone available, so how do you choose which one to use? Well, let's look at the different types of technology available. Looking at directionality, we only want to pick up certain sounds in the room, the speaker's voice and not the air conditioning unit. We also want a strong acoustic input with a good signal to noise ratio in order to be able to sufficiently amplify the signal so it can be clearly heard throughout the room and to minimise the risk of feedback. Achieving a good signal to noise ratio is often dependent on the acoustic environment we're in and our choice of microphone to suit. So to help with all the above requirements, microphones have been designed with directional properties. And there are three main types. There's a cardioid pickup, a hypercardioid, both of which pick up sound predominantly from one direction, and omnidirectional that picks up sound from all directions at once. Now none of these properties are perfect. Indeed, cardioid means heart-shaped, which describes the pickup pattern showing it picks up sound from the front, but also a bit from the sides. In the AV world, it's very common to use a cardioid microphone for picking up speech from a presenter. Shotgun microphones are typically used in TV and film, as they're excellent at picking up sound from a long way away. Their characteristic long design is known as an interference tube. The microphone capsule is mounted at the end of a long hollow tube with carefully positioned slots along its length. These slots allow sound to enter the tube and this results in cancellation of sound not coming from where the microphone is pointing at. In general, the longer the interference tube is, the more directional the microphone will be. All microphones work on the same principle. You have a diaphragm that's similar to the human eardrum and when the sound hits this, it vibrates and this vibration is turned into an electrical signal to go into the rest of your sound system. And there are two main methods for converting that vibration into an electrical signal and this differentiates the two main types of microphone. Dynamic microphones have their diaphragm connected to a small coil of wire. So when the diaphragm moves, so does the coil. As this coil moves between a magnet, it generates an electrical output. This output is tiny, perhaps two millivolts, two thousandths of a volt. Dynamic microphones can be relatively cheap and their performance is okay in many situations. Let's look at condenser microphones. Condenser microphones are a little more complicated. They use the principle of a capacitor to operate. One plate of the capacitor is fixed and the other is the diaphragm. When audio hits the diaphragm, it changes the distance between the two plates, which varies the capacitance and results in our sound signal. The capacitor is kept charged using a continuous power supply. Condenser microphones are much more sensitive than dynamic ones as they don't have a physical coil to move and are almost always better quality, especially at high frequencies. Condenser microphones need to be powered to make them work. To avoid requiring power supplies everywhere, phantom power was invented and normally comes from a mixing desk or signal processor. This DC power is sent up the microphone cable itself and is in the range of 9 to 48 volts. So, that's an overview of the technology behind microphones.